fresh meat straight off the farm. Fresh? This body's a year old. It's a sort of a joke. Your predecessor would have got it. Yeah, I understand he was funny. Lazy, but funny. You said something about a farm? Collective farm number five. The big field right next to the... This girl died in the woods. I'm sorry, were you about to say right next to the woods? Did you look through them? No. Well, you better go back and look through them. For what? For something I can use to identify her. Her glasses, a cigarette butt, anything. If there'd been anything like that, we'd have brought it in. You think we're all lazy? Go back and search the woods. It's after five. I don't care what time it is. Take an extra man. Tell Sasha it's on my authority. Comb the area. Look under every leaf on every tree. All right, all right. I get the idea. Heartless son of a bitch. What's he trying to prove? He'll come around. He's new. Dr. Marchinsky, your turn. The body's ready for autopsy. No, there's no question how the little girl was killed. Violent blow to the back of... Shouldn't you do an autopsy all the same? Comrade. Did you help me get this job so I could do your job too, is that it? Comrade Drakov. What is it? They're coming in with something for you. They want you to wait. Tell them tomorrow's fine. I can't deal with it now. It's after nine. Who cares what time it is? Have a nice evening. to the back of the skull, multiple stab wounds to the face. On the second body, as many as 17 stab wounds to the face and eyes, along with striations of the eye sockets. 26 wounds to the chest and breakage suggesting 32 stab wounds with additional disfigurement to the breasts, 43 stab wounds to the face along with traces of semen. On the sixth victim, the penis has been removed approximately 2.3 centimeters above the junction with some additional disfigurement of the genital area. Some additional disfigurement. Some additional disfigurement. Additional disfigurement of a nature that suggests not so much a sharp instrument as teeth. Yesterday, the men of the Rostov militia unearthed eight bodies in differing stages of decomposition. And you brought the odors of the grave into the room with us as an olfactory aid? How clever. <laughs> I assume the time you devoted to their examination was the time you couldn't spare to get cleaned up. Next time, a little less diligence and a little more hygiene. In the rather poorly kept files of my predecessor, I found records of seven other bodies. If you don't mind, comrade, I would like to start by introducing you to the members of the committee. General Ivanov, head of KGB for the Rostov Oblast. Comrade Dunyakov, Comrade Tetyevsky, our mayor, Comrade Ignatiev, and of course, Comrade Bondarchuk, secretary for ideology of the Oblast Communist Party. I'm Colonel Fetisov. I am in charge of the militia, of which your office is a small part. I am also 
secretary of this committee. Gentlemen, this is comrade Burakov. He is our new forensics expert. They are a breed of men who work in basements and chemistry sets. And one can hardly blame them for looking a little startled when they come out into the light. Come in, please. Begin. It's clear that we have a serial killer on our hands. Already the most prolific in Russian history. We'll have to take extreme methods to stop him. Did he say a serial killer? We understood there were wide discrepancies between the wounds inflicted. That's what you told us, Colonel. And both boys and girls. It could be two different men. It could be a gang. There are no serial killers in the Soviet state. Well, that sounds more like wishful thinking than a... It is a decadent Western phenomenon. Gentlemen, that's all we have for now. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules. I'll keep you abreast of any developments. No pun intended. Welcome to the halls of power. My God, no wonder nothing gets done. In this case, it will. Why? Because you will be in charge. What? You're in charge of the case. In fact, of the entire department, as we technically don't have one yet. We have a division of most serious crimes, but we'll put you in charge of the killer department. <laughs> the killer department. But I'm not even a detective. I'm a forensics man. Haven't you always wanted to be a detective? Well, yes. Good. Then you're in charge. Start by making lists of the manpower and the logistical support you think you may require. Then outline the general approach to beginning the investigation. Report back to me tomorrow. Good day. Is there something else? Uh, forgive me, but uh, we reached the top of the regional apartment list in forensics, my wife and two kids. We've qualified for a two-bedroom. We've been waiting for seven years. If I take the new job, do I lose my seniority? I personally guarantee that you will get the next two-bedroom apartment that becomes available in Rostov. All right? Now. Go home and tell your wife about your promotion. Yes, sir. <laughs> Next, a special report on crime. The deadly combination of heroin addiction and street crime is ravaging America's cities, as even their own Time magazine... Okay, let's hear it. Let's hear what? If this job is so great, why are you so upset about it? I'm supposed to keep it a secret. I won't tell us all.
For God's sake, you're tracking dirt all over the place. I'm sorry. What the hell have you been doing? They made me move some filthy boxes at the factory. Where did you last see her? It was over a year ago. I don't remember. She was your daughter. How can you not remember where you last saw her? Okay. Did she have friends? No. She rode the trains all day. She was slow. Friends? Who? What were their names? Did he have habits? The Elektrichka. Say again. He rode the Elektrichka. He rode the trains? For fun? All the time. Electrichka. He finds them on the Electrichka. I know it. The Electrichka, the trains that crisscross rural Russia. I know what they are, comrade. I don't ride them, but they do sometimes get in the way of my limousine. If I was hesitant in my reaction, it had only to do with a vague unease. About what? The fact that you have only been a detective for 48 hours and your intuition is already so highly developed. Are you genius or just given to bouts of enthusiasm? I know the killer's method. He picks up young people on the trains. I've been to the station. They're all there. The naive, the weak, slow. It's over. He's confessed. What? Who confessed? Some retired from the institution at Shakti. A gypsy. He's gonna show them the murder sites now. Well, so what's your problem? Don't you remember what you told us? They're coaching him. That experienced detective. That's it, that's where I killed her. Again, you fucked up. This is the how many a time? The 12th? He leaves for an appointment with his spring suppliers on Tuesday. Comes back Thursday saying it went fine, and Monday I hear they never saw him. He never showed up. 
You have any explanation for your miserable performance? show you to the workers on the line. See what they think of you. This is the man who stopped the chain of supply. This is the man who stopped our work today. I hope this latest murder puts to rest the idea that the gypsy boy did it. Why? Because he was in custody when this one was killed. So what? It could be a gang of which he was only a part. We can't discount the man as a suspect quite so cavalierly. He did confess. I have some requests to make. We have 16 bodies, and no reason to believe we found all that are out there. In my opinion, it's a state of emergency, and for that reason, I have to ask for more men, a lot more. I also need computers so that I can start a library of information about the case. And I need to communicate with the FBI's Serial Murder Task Force in Quantico, Virginia, the largest storehouse of information about serial murderers in the world. And finally, we need to publicize the case as widely as possible. First, to warn people of the danger. Second, to get more of the unknown bodies identified. And third, in the hope of bringing forth a witness to one of the crimes. No. No to what? No to everything? Are you mad? There's a maniac out there who'll kill every child in a goddamn Stop district. Stop this insolence. Is there something you want to say, Colonel? No, sir. Bondarchuk is a stupid man. He may be stupid, but he is in charge. How can it be that you don't seem to know how things work in the Soviet system? I know how things work, but right now there are 16 dead children, and I want a little special treatment. The strength of a bureaucracy is measured by its ability to resist giving anyone special treatment. I don't appreciate your sense of humor. One day you will. The reason they said no to your demands? To ask for more men, or computers for that matter, is to admit to our superiors in Moscow that we are overwhelmed, which they will never do. To ask the FBI for help, 
is to admit to the West that we are behind in both forensic techniques and managing information, which they will never do. And to publicize the case is to admit that such crimes exist in the Soviet Union, which is the one thing they would rather die than do, publicly admit that anything is wrong. The only way that I have been able to get anything done is behind closed doors. By hoarding favors, by bribing, by wheedling. But that will take time. It always does. Only in this case, people will die. People will die. And it will take all our strength to suffer these outrages, but suffer them we must. Because we are the people who have to catch this monster, Comrade Burakov. You and I. As you may have noticed, no one else is even willing to try. Good day. You care about nothing but making your superiors happy. You're right. I should spend more time trying to alienate them. Perhaps you could teach me. You say you and I have to catch this monster. What you mean is that it's up to me, isn't it? That's why a beginner is a perfect choice. If I fail, I'll be dangling out there by myself. Happy birthday, Nadia. Are you trying to sabotage what we're doing here? Does he understand he's supposed to be undercover? He's supposed to let the killer feel comfortable, let him try to pick somebody up? Did you think wearing your uniform would help? It was freezing when I got here this morning. So what? It says only warm coat. My brother-in-law has a warm coat. I'm sure I can borrow it tomorrow. I don't bother with it today, but... Give me the coat.
Thank you. I'll get back later. Let me solve the case. In the years since we discovered the first bodies, we found six more and interviewed 800 potential witnesses. For all that, we have no suspect. In fact, all we've been able to do is discredit the theory that a gang of retardates from the Institute could have been involved. And according to some of the people in this room, we haven't even been able to do that. If you continue to forbid us to publicize the case, I can't honestly say when I expect our luck to change. You're saying you know less than when you began. Not exactly. Bring in Gorbanov. Gentlemen, this is Comrade Gorbanov, special prosecutor from Moscow. Sit down, Comrade. Thank you. Gentlemen, without wishing to embarrass anyone in particular, I must tell you that I've been sent here to take over this investigation because of its poor focus and slipshod execution. My superiors in Moscow agree with me that we should drop the train station surveillance immediately, not only because it's costly in terms of man hours, but also because it hasn't produced a single viable suspect in a year. And because, and I say this with all due respect to my predecessor, it's based exclusively on one man's intuition. Well, I'm afraid that's not good enough anymore. As of now, we'll run this investigation as professionals. As of now, standing around is no longer our style. Aggressive pursuit is. We'll aggressively pursue suspects, concentrating primarily on known sexual deviants, for the obvious reason that they fit the nature of the crimes and particularly on homosexuals, owing to the fact that there are so many young boys among the victims. And we'll concentrate to a lesser extent on doctors and surgeons because of the precision of the eviscerations. Does that sound satisfactory to everyone? I object most Very strongly. satisfactory. Extremely satisfactory. I particularly like the idea of investigating known homosexuals. I think it's the best idea we've heard in the rather pathetic history of this case. We want to thank you, Comrade Gorbanov. We understand you can only stay in the area for another day or so. I trust you will have enough time to get Burkov's team pointed in the right direction before you go back to Moscow. I'm sure I will. Good, then. We're done here, I think. Are we not? Good then. You heard him. He'll be here for 24 hours and then he leaves. We still run the day to day operation. In a bureaucracy, it is important to know which skirmishes to join and which to ignore. developing quite a network of informants among the city's homosexual community. For what that's worth. I found it fascinating that Secretary Bondarchuk was so vehement about pursuing them. Didn't you? No. There is a whole world full of gossip and innuendo out there to explore, Comrade Burakov. Perhaps if you took an interest, it would be a little more light of heart. You think 
A man is what he says, don't you, Colonel? He is if he talks for a living. A man is what he fights for. Well, I don't fight for anything. I know. He's a doctor with a reputation, if you know what I mean. As I suspected, comrade, it's fornication. I made some drawings. <laughs> Take them in. Seriously? Take them in. Why are we arresting so many perfectly respectable doctors? Because we were told to. You were told to investigate them, not necessarily to detain them. The doctors who are party members, we detain as briefly as possible. The sexual deviants who are party members, we tend to keep a little longer. Of all the arrogance! I'll speak to the men about it, comrade. I'll take care of it. Why aren't you investigating policemen, comrade Burakov? Eh? Wouldn't you say they know more about getting away with murder than any other group? Wouldn't you say that you yourself would make a good suspect? I know it's late, I'm sorry. I wasn't asleep. Ponderchuk suspects a cop now. Someone who knows how to kill him, get away with it. I suppose it's a possibility. The one he suspects is me. That's absurd. I'm afraid, though. You know what he's like. Someone could come in the night and take me away. If you knew they were coming on Friday, what would you do different this week at work? Nothing. Good. Eat. Oh. Where are you going all dressed up? It's Saturday. I have some work. A uh, trip I have to take for work. To make up for something I failed to do. Why doesn't that surprise me? some vodka in my bag. Let do. What the 
Carlos, use your hands for God's sake, help me in. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This one was the pissed him off. Mm. <laughs> A little respect for the dead. I want every piece of garbage within 200 yards of here checked out. For fingerprints and fibers and bodily fluids. Every can, every bottle, you understand me? If we're gonna fail, it won't be because of something we left undone. You understand what I'm saying, goddammit? I'll shake them up for you. I'll get them working. Okay, let's move out. Is he serious? Has he gone crazy? Keep moving. You see anything interesting, you let me know. Please stand, citizen. Jacob Taylor. May I have your bag? Citizen Jacob Taylor, you're under arrest. I was on my way home. I talk to the young people because I used to be a teacher. I always talk to young people. I, I had rope and a knife in my bag because I work in a factory and often need them.
think, personally, I don't think he's savage enough. What, what do I know? I have some more paperwork to do. Stay after him, all right? Absolutely. I have a suspect. What is it? Blood test came back negative. What? Semen samples are type AB. Chikatilo is type A. I don't believe it. It's true. What are you talking about is true? What does that mean? Our blood test is for 11 variables. The FBI's is for 149. How do you know that? I saw it in a movie! What the hell difference does it make what the blood test says? You don't know what you're talking about. Comrade Burakov, are you aware that your prisoner is a member of the Communist Party? Is he not aware that this man is a party member in good standing? Are you or are you not aware? Of course that... I'm aware of it, Comrade. I'm a detective. Remember, you approved my appointment. And you're holding him anyway? As is my right. After his blood test came back negative. Who told you that? What difference does it make? Did you tell him? What difference does it make? It makes a difference to me. Let him go. Now. Let him go or suffer the consequences. Colonel! Release citizen Chikatilo. Burakov's office. No, not yet. Strange, it's worse not finding bodies than finding them. At least each time we found another body, we had another chance to find a fingerprint or a witness. This way, I'd rather find three at a time than none in a year. Let's get out of here. Let's go to work. What happened to the boy? He's in a holding cell downstairs. He's not connected to the murders. But he did give us a fascinating little piece of gossip. Can we let him go? What? Can we let him go? Why? Why not? 
gave you your goddamn gossip, why can't you just let him go? I'm sorry. Please, let's show him some mercy. He's a victim, not a criminal. He's a child. All right. Go ahead. But don't get anyone else involved. Thank you. I'll do it myself. You'd rather find three bodies than none. You'd rather find citizens dead if it would make your job easier. Have you become that perverse? I do not think this is a fruitful line of inquiry. I do. Viktor Vasilovich Burakov. Do you stand by these remarks? Do you stand by the statement that you would rather find bodies than not? <laughs> Is this man crying? <laughs> the safety of our children cry. Mrs. Burakova, Mikhail Fetisov. I have your husband here. He's having a problem. Yes. Yes, yes, I know. I have arranged for him to take a vacation at a rest cure. Can I persuade you to come and pick him up? Replace him. No. What was that? What did you say? After five straight years on the same assignment, Lieutenant Burakov is taking his first vacation. His job will be waiting for him when he comes back. Get out. All of you, right now! I have here. Well, I don't care what you have there. Information Who cares? About I'm here. The 19-year-old boy you maintain in the town of Shakti. In the apartment you have arranged for him. 
and the gifts that you have given him, and the dates of your last three overnight visits. If you attempt to fire Lieutenant Burakov, now or at any time, I will send all this to your wife. I recommended you for this position. I will always be indebted to you. Packard! What's happening, babe? Where you been, huh? I've been in there. You stand a toss? Sure, I'm clean. Oh, man. Dick Tracy, somebody. I said I was clean. I'm not going to get stuck, am I? No, I said I'm clean, didn't I? I do. You know what happens. Yeah, I said I'm clean. Oh, 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 He's very proud of himself for defending you. I think he feels he's finally earned your respect. Has he? Will you tell him when you go back to work? I think it would mean a lot to him. I knew I could talk you into it. Lieutenant Burakov, you're ten days early. I feel much better. I'm glad. You haven't been home? I came here first. I wanted to thank you for taking care of my family while I was away. And for saving my job. You were right about knowing which skirmishes to ignore. Not really. It's just... You spend enough time with the lion, the idea of roaring starts to seem more and more reasonable. There's something I wanted to ask you about. What's it? While I was away, I spoke to a psychiatrist. Uh, I'd like to bring one into the case. Maybe he'd have some insight. You are aware, I am sure, that never in the history of the Soviet Union has a psychiatrist been brought into a murder case. I know. You will be the first. You will make history. What? Did you just come in here and go out of your way to make me feel good, then ask me for something? My God, are you learning how to manipulate people? I've created a monster. What about the psychiatrist? I'll see what I can do, all right? Thank you. Now, do you want to go home, or do you want to try and ease back into it? Come in! Colonel, there's... It's all right. There's another body in the woods. Your timing is impeccable. I'm ready. What was that about? He likes to examine the terrain a little before the rest of us get in there and stomp around too much. That's smart, huh? He doesn't do too much dumb. So you would say that he is a good detective? I would say that I've never worked with anyone as good. Excuse me, please. Can I tell you the order of events here, Colonel? We start with any physical evidence on or adjacent to the body. Make a cast of this. 
I will have it on your desk by six. I know it's irregular, but I hope one or two of you will be interested enough in what we've said today to get involved. If you are, please stay. Thank you. It is embarrassing to see grown men run from their responsibilities. It is like seeing your parents drunk for the first time. They are afraid. To be a psychiatrist in this country is to be an expert on paranoia, whether you meant to be or not. Why aren't you afraid? I'm sorry. Do I look like a man of courage to you? I'm Bukhanovsky. <clears throat> Bukhanovsky. Well, I've always been interested in abnormal psychology, which is a dangerous thing in the Soviet state. Anyway, I was fascinated by the pattern of these figurements you described. I'd like to try to help, but discreetly. I'd like to think about it a while and then write my ideas down, if I have any, and send them along. Does that sound all right? Good. I'd like to be as cautious as possible when risking my career. Oh, my God. <laughs> Being a hero is enormously taxing. I've only been doing it for seven or eight minutes, and already I feel strangely enervated. <laughs> you... What is it? You must live with a great deal of pressure. It's all right now, you know. What is? Suffering over all this, all these horrors. If we didn't suffer over them, we'd be monsters ourselves. read the whole thing last night. It's intuitive, well defended. Little chance that he's a homosexual. Yeah. A man with a wife and kids. And the sexual problem. And maybe a job working with young people. A worker in a children's home, a teacher. We'll have to have someone go through the card file again. This is interesting speculation. But certainly not conclusive enough to persuade me to change the goals of the investigation. Not the goals, comrade. Just the methods. We'll continue arresting homosexuals. Even if it doesn't directly contribute to the resolution of the case, we'll still be doing society a service. Repeating our top story, under the new policy of perestroika, 
Soviet leaders agreed yesterday to surrender the party's 72-year monopoly on power. American President George Bush cabled the chairman to congratulate him on his commitment to democratic reform and to assure him that the hopes of the American people are with us as we chart a new course of the Soviet state. Thank you. Will it change things? I don't know yet. I've been on the telephone since midnight. Just keep at it, all right? And we'll see. Can you get him for me? We have to talk. No, not now. Tomorrow at the office. Why? What is it? No, tomorrow morning. Don't make me suffer, Colonel. There'll be a new head of the investigation by tomorrow morning. Come to the committee room at 8 and we'll meet him together. Who is it? It's not decided yet. I'm flying to Moscow right now to see if I can influence their decision. That's what I stopped to tell you. Don't start worrying yet. Have I ever let you down? Thank you so much for your support. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Good luck. Where are they? Who? The committee. We are it. Who's the new head of the investigation? You. Congratulations, Colonel. Well, actually, I'm a general now. I don't have my insignia yet, but they are on order. Congratulations, General. You are a colonel. Congratulations, colonel. Now, sit down. Let's get started. I am now the prefect of militia for the entire oblast, reporting only to Moscow. I can allocate resources any way I see fit, and I am considering this case my highest priority. You need men, you need publicity, you need communications, you have it. I got these in Moscow yesterday, they're fantastic. You have a telephone appointment tonight at midnight to speak with the head of the FBI's serial murder task force, Special Agent Bickford. He told me late last night that he has been following your work on this case with great interest for about five years. I didn't ask him how. He considers you a man of iron will. For what it's worth, I concur. Um, he, he also told me that he rotates his people off serial murder cases every 18 months, whether they like it or not, to prevent the inevitable psychological consequences of too much frustration. I, I pretended that I had known that all along. He thinks that I pushed you and pushed you in search of your limits until I realized that you didn't have any. And privately, I offer my deepest apologies to you and your wife. I hope that someday you can forgive me my ignorance. Anyway, he suggested I not tell you this next, but he said that he starts a new group of recruits through the program every 16 weeks. And the first lecture that he gives is always about you. He calls you the one man in the world that he would least like to have after him. An intelligent, methodical, painstaking, passionate detective who would rather die than give up. Again, I concur. Colonel Burakov, I am sorry. You may go.
have a plan. I've been thinking about it for a long time. We intend to have a visible, uniformed presence 24 hours a day in every single train station within 50 miles of Rostov. Every station except three. The three smallest stations on the Matiev line in the Kapman forest. There we will have only undercover men. There we want him to make his next attempt to kill one of our children. In order for this plan to work, we need you to do a job. We need you to accost anyone who stops to talk to a child or a young woman. Anyone who stops to talk to any stranger at all. We need you to demand their identity cards and ask their business and take down their answers in your notebooks. We need you to search them. And above all, we need you to do this visibly. We need everyone in the station to notice. Understand? What's that? I didn't hear that. Yes, Commandant General. Again? Yes, Commandant General. Do you think you are capable of performing these tasks? Yes, Commandant General. Do you think you are capable of performing them without subtlety? Yes, Commandant General. Without discretion? Yes, Commandant General. Without tact? Yes, Commandant General. Good. Ago, if the cop took this big a chance and failed, he'd have been shot. For your sake, I hope it works. Don't worry, I won't let them shoot you. Not without a trial. started well, but uh, we're only seven weeks in and already we're getting lazy. I have a report here from one of your stations that reads, no suspicious characters in three days. Three days! The whole idea is to stay visible. Surprise inspection. You want to come? All I'm saying is keep the pressure on, okay? And I'll let you in on a little secret. Surprise inspection in half an hour. Tell your men. It does defeat the purpose of the surprise. Just for that station. You have to give them a little sugar once in a while anyway. Your interrogation slips. Very good. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Any delegation slips? Get up here. Press yourself. I had to go to the toilet. I was gone no longer than five minutes. Give me your interrogation slips. Why so many? They're from since Friday, all through the holiday weekend. How long have you been here? 36 hours. You have no relief? No, sir. My partner got sick and they didn't send anyone else from the station because of the holiday. Let's look through these, shall we? No harm done. You can send these along with the rest of the beds when you leave. What is it? Could you personally speak to this man? Yes, sir. Why? He came up out of the woods and there was dirt on his jacket. He was well dressed, but he was dirty, so I asked him his business. He said he'd visited his mother in Belkov, which is a tiny hamlet near here, which made sense. Except I was born in Belkov and I didn't remember her, so I wrote him up. Did you search him? No, sir. He hadn't accosted anyone, he just looked odd. Do you remember this name, Chikatilo? We have a bag. Yes. Consider yourself relieved at this post. Take my car to the station immediately. Tell them to cable Moscow. I want 200 soldiers here prepared to search these woods in one hour. Got it? One hour. Yes, sir. happening to me. My heart is pounding. My collar feels tight. What the hell is this? Passion. General, they found something. Step back, comrades. You've done your part. Thank you. Get the team together, then start sending the soldiers home, unless the general has some other use for them. Nine of them on my conscience. You mustn't blame yourself. It's not that. 
What the heck? She's my cousin's daughter, Natasha Dunienkova. She was eight. I'm sorry. You'll be okay? You want me to send someone over here? For what it's worth, you may have helped us catch him. How did you do this? It worked. The box fell on me as well. Would you mind removing all your clothes, please? What? Remove your clothes. How did you get these abrasions on the head of your penis? How did you get these abrasions on the head of your penis? I don't know. Can you honestly tell me that you feel no remorse? Not for killing children? Not for cutting off their genitals? Don't you feel the urge to confess to your crimes? My God, I am not human! This is a disaster. Why can't we Because just... we can't. He demanded to do the interrogation himself. And he still has a lot of friends. I'll talk about my crimes tomorrow. What's that? Repeat that. I'll tell about my crimes tomorrow, but I am exhausted today. Did you get that? Good. Now it's in the official record. We're not getting anywhere. What are you talking about? Didn't you hear what he just said? He said that yesterday, too. It's the only way he knows to get you to stop badgering him. What do you want? I want you to let us bring in someone who can get somewhere with him. I'm doing the interrogation. You're wasting time. Five days already. 
with no other evidence, if we do not get a confession by the 28th, we have to let him go. I'm doing the interrogation. Are you willing to take that risk just to satisfy your ego? You handled him quite deftly. I've had it. I will not suffer that stupidity anymore. He may be stupid, but he's in charge. What is this? This is your confession. In 1978, you fondled the breast of an 11-year-old girl. Are you mocking me? It's true. I don't give a damn if it's true. We're talking about murder here. You know that. You think I'm a fool? I was fired from my teaching job for this incident. I know that. What the hell kind of game are you playing? Citizen Chikatilo, I asked your question. You think I don't know that? If you appoint the man who gets in to confess, won't that reflect happily on your wisdom? Whom do you have in mind, Colonel? Citizen X. I'm sure a lot of it is wildly incorrect. Would you like me to read it to you? Pardon me? Yes. Please. There's some introductory rubbish designed to make me sound brilliant. We can ignore that in here, I should think. Uh, Citizen X has probably had a tendency toward isolation since childhood. His internal world, filled with fantasy, is closed to those around him, even those close to him. The adolescence of such a person is, as a rule, painful because he is often subjected to the laughter of his peers and at a time when success among them is the subject of his secret dreams. His sexuality is not noticeable to those around him. However, it is an external asexuality that frequently coincides with steady masturbation and bright erotic fantasies. He is painfully sensitive in company incapable of flirting and courtship. However, it cannot be excluded that he has fathered a family. There is reason to think that uh, Citizen X has a weakness of sexual potency. This is supported by the fact that signs of entry of the sexual organ into the sexual paths of the victims have been found in nine cases, but that in only two, the length of contact has been sufficient to reach orgasm, with the rest of the cases involving ejaculation on the body of the victims. He sits or squats astride his victim. The orgasm and ejaculation most likely occur at this stage of the act and at this position, sitting on the victim in the period of her agony. 
The blinding of some of the victims could be a symbol of his power over the partner or an inability to bear his or her gaze, even if it is unconscious, or possibly a reflection of X's belief in the folktale that the victim's eyes retain an image of the killer even after death. <gasps> <laughs> it is the last, is it not? You believe the police might see your image in their eyes? <laughs> about the ejaculation, was I right about that? Sitting on the victim in the period of her agony. You ejaculated while stabbing them. without additional masturbation. Usually with. And that accounts for the abrasions on your own organ, the frenzied masturbation. With the last one especially. Natasha Dunyankova. After killing her, I still had some difficulty. I hurt myself trying to achieve release. Congratulations, gentlemen. He'd say something witty, but he's overcome with emotion right now. Thank you both. Uh, may I say that together, you make a wonderful person. I damn it. You should thank them for God's sake. These are the men who caught him.
Step through the door, please. Please don't turn around. 